All right, now we're taking a look at our Invest 97L, the most recent tropical cyclone and really the only one we've had for about a month here to even track. We're looking at our satellite imagery real quickly, and as you can see, it looks like things have weakened from frame one to the final frame there. It looks like we've seen some weakening here on satellite imagery. It's still very, very early in the process, and we see a lot of recycling oftentimes with tropical cyclones like this one. I will say, however, that the last few frames, if we draw our attention, I'm actually going to literally draw uh, us a circle right here where you do see some intensification here in this area that I circled very last minute there, the last couple of frames. So we're seeing things kind of rebound, so it does look to be recycling. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our two-day graphical tropical weather outlook here. And as you can see, we have a 20% chance over the next two days now of development. Before this yesterday, we actually had a 0% chance over the next two days. So we're starting to see this one have some chance at development in the shorter range, uh, which means that we're well on our way uh, to seeing this one obviously maybe become a depression storm or hurricane one day. Uh, we're seeing a 20% chance of development over the next two days and the five day outlook here, as you can see, we still have a 40% chance of development over the next five days. I will say it does look to be a little bit less vertical here than it was yesterday. The trajectory, it looks a little bit more like it could head towards the Caribbean as opposed to straight for Bermuda. So a little bit more of a southern track here possibly being trended. Uh, and we're seeing the National Hurricane Center kind of adjust for this. So I will be curious to see uh, if we do see a little bit more of a southern track there. I'm a little bit more concerned about this. I will tell you guys right off the bat, this type of a track is just more concerning to me in general, historically, this would be a lot more likely to be a threat for the United States, I would say. Whether it's the Gulf or the East Coast, this is more concerning. And obviously, we have our islands, our neighbors there in the Bahamas, Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. All of them now have to be on high alert. And this one seems to be in trajectory for them as well. Um, and we need to watch for those things also. Now... What we're going to do is take a look here at our modeled guidance vorticity. Now, the reason we look at this is because it shows us large scale rotation in the atmosphere. We won't see things like tornadoes or small things like that that spin, but what we do see is large scale spin on low pressure systems or tropical cyclones here. And in this case, we're going to be watching, obviously, for a tropical cyclone. Our storm is currently somewhere in here, so we'll watch this little uh, area and it's going to move up further north in that arrow. It's going to move just north of that arrow. So let's see. We see it really pick up by the time we're reaching maybe closer to midweek, Tuesday, Wednesday time frame here. We see some more reds popping up, which is show, indicating stronger rotation there in the atmosphere. This is according to our European model, by the way. We will take a look at the GFS model as well. We have some high pressure over top, and this is what's really suppressing it to the south across the Atlantic. So we're seeing it kind of want to go around this high pressure system. It's probably going to be the most likely outcome here. Uh, but we really see that this one loses some intensity and then regains it here as it's approaching the Caribbean. It's a smaller storm, but we do see those reds popping up more intensity. That's by Sunday the 14th. And by the time we take a look at about Wednesday the 17th, we see this is right near the Bahamas here, this cyclone. Uh, but there is a lot of uh, strong jets, it seems like, in this area that would likely, if this was correct, prohibit it from really reaching the East Coast. It'd kind of be like a force field for the East Coast if we saw something like this set up. Uh, and this high is pretty far to the east, so this gives it a lot of wiggle room. If we saw a high more like near Bermuda, you'd really want to watch out on the East Coast, but that's just not at all what we're taking a look at here with this one. But I do have something to show you guys. Let's take a look at the GFS real quickly. Now, this one's going to look a lot different. Again, we're taking a look around here for where that tropical cyclone is right now. By the time we reach midweek, we see that this storm is already looking quite intense, probably already a uh, established tropical system by that point. And then we see this one easily becomes a hurricane by Saturday, August 13th, only five days from now, uh, approaching uh, the Caribbean in general here. Now, as we approach about Monday, the 15th, we see this one takes a pretty far northern trajectory. But this is right in line with what the National Hurricane Center is calling for, something like this. Uh, and we do see that there is some high pressure up to our north here, just like this. Uh, we still see this activity, this bit of a jet stream in there. But watch what happens on this model. It, uh, it hangs out. It slows down. This is Wednesday, the 17th. And we see things kind of clearing up here in the southeast. 
And by the time we're reaching Saturday the 20th, this is so long from now, this is 12 days, we would still be waiting for this storm. Very slow moving here on our GFS model, but this is a very, very intense storm here. Uh, would certainly need to be watched. Now, what we're going to actually do is this might give us a good view. Let me let me see. Uh, let's see. Here we go. So we see this storm a little bit closer now. Uh, let me see if I can get a better view. Uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, so we got a better view here. We see that our tropical cyclone hits the outer banks as a strong hurricane here on this particular model. So the GFS does very wacky things, especially past 200 hours, as well past 200 hours. It's past 300 hours, but we see it really scrape along the entire eastern seaboard here in kind of a storm track that we've been kind of really hoping would never happen. Um, and hopefully, and honestly, most likely, still will not happen. But we're taking a look at a possibility here. If the model is showing it, you know what that means? It means it is possible at least. We see that southeast New England as well gets a direct hit from a hurricane. Hurricane easily here with these bright, bright pinks showing up. Uh, very, very intense storm here showing up on this model. Even Newfoundland there. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, Nova Scotia as well. All those areas up there in eastern Canada getting really, really hit with this one. Uh, hopefully nothing like this occurs. Hopefully we can get it to move quick enough to where this jet stream is still in place. We see that what happens is, is the storm stalls out and that jet kind of breaks up. It's the jets maybe like this at this point. So what this does is it just gives this area just full on, uh, at, at risk of getting hit by this one, basically, according to this GFS model. Definitely, definitely something to consider, but I think this is a less likely outcome. And every single model run, this one's probably switching. I saw a little bit of a sneak peek at the 12Z model run, uh, and it already does not have this popping up. But again, if a model's showing it, we need to consider it a possibility. So we will cont continue to watch this storm over the coming days. Uh, just take this with a grain of salt for sure. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the model intensity guidance, which will show us how intense these models think this storm is really going to get. Here we are taking a look at that model intensity guidance, and quickly, these models, the, the four models that we have here as of now, or five, I think maybe, they have it quickly reaching tropical storm status by 36 hours from now, and already a Category 1 hurricane by 96 hours from now, possibly even Category 2 or more by the time reaching hours 120, which is exactly five days, so possibly scraping on major hurricane status within five days. All of these models right now take it strip into hurricane status and they plateau there around category two or category three status at about, you know, days five through seven there. We'll have to obviously see what happens with this. There's a lot of time to go. So we really need to take this with a grain of salt, but things are looking quite intense so far uh, on the models and, and really anything we take a look at here in general for this storm. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, I, I still really feel like we're up in the air with this one, but we're at a four out of six for that reason. For today's patron, highlighted the name of the you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lerla Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I'd also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotillas, Cap Bite, Charles Tennant, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Cap Bite, Stephen Finn, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.